Hello, it was nice of you to join me today. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you're ready for a creepy video because today I'm going to be talking about 10 Disney myths, stories, conspiracy theories. I decked out my background here to be Halloween themed. I've got the candle, I've got the lights, and I even have a special guest here today. I don't have a name for her yet, but she is a skeleton mermaid. If you want to suggest any names down below, please let me know because I don't have a name for her yet. I think we should name her because she's making an appearance in my first October video. Yes, I said first because I'm not going to be a flake like last time and post two videos and then stop. Anyways, I have lots of videos planned and I'm so excited. If you're new to my channel, my name is Eric Nava. If you're not new to my channel, you probably noticed that I didn't say my normal intro and I just realized that I didn't, so let's just start this thing over. Hey guys, it's Erica and I'm back with another video. I'm just kidding. Um, we're just gonna hop right into this video. I hope you all enjoy. Grab your popcorn because I have some creepy things about Disney that you may or may not know. So yeah, let's get on with the video. I think she looks fine there. Number one on my list is the fact that nobody can die at Disney. I know what you're thinking. What the heck do you mean, Erica? Well, what I mean is, is that if somebody gets extremely hurt to where it's pretty obvious that they're dead or if somebody does get injured and they're on the brink of death, Disney's medical team will take them outside of Disney as quickly as possible and declare them dead outside of Disney and not inside of the Disney park. According to Snopes.com where I got my information, some former Disney employees have reported that the quote-unquote no one dies at Disney is in fact a Disney policy. One of the stories behind this creepy fact happened at the Epcot area. Some guy stood in front of the golf ball and unfortunately brought a gun to his head. Although there were many witnesses that could say that yes, he did die right then and there. Disney's medical team took him outside of Disney and declared him dead there. Personally, I think this is kind of a smart idea because Disney does not get that negative PR. Although yes, Technically, if somebody does have a tragic accident like that, technically, yes, they're dead, but Disney doesn't declare them dead until they're outside of Disney property. Number two on the list has to do with a very popular ride. This ride is named It's a Small World. This story has to do with the animatronics on the ride. Personally, I think animatronics are creepy enough already, and the story just makes things so much worse, but it's fine. Anyways, apparently, Disney workers claim that the It's a Small World animatronics move when the ride's not even operating. Employees will see them blink. Employees will also see them in one spot at the end of the day, and then the next morning, they're in a totally different spot. I've never been to Disney, but now that I know this fact, I'm gonna be even more creeped out if I go on the ride. Animatronics are just so creepy, and I don't like knowing that about the cute little It's a Small World one. Number three has to do with Walt Disney himself. This is a conspiracy theory that his body is located at Disney and is frozen. The story behind this conspiracy theory is that Walt Disney died of lung cancer on December 15th, 1966. Obviously he was diagnosed with lung cancer and he asked the doctor if there was any cure for lung cancer. The doctor said, not right now, maybe in the future there will be. So because Walt is such a genius, he decided to freeze his body and keep it at Disney World. That way in the future, if a cure for lung cancer did come out, they would be able to unfreeze his body, give him the cure, and he will be able to continue his Disney work. A lot of people say that if his body was frozen and is at Disney World, it's either in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride somewhere, under the Sleeping Beauty castle, or in one of those creepy tunnels that Disney have underneath the ground. Personally, I think Walt is such a smart guy that if this conspiracy was true, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not sure if this theory is debunked though, because apparently his family did come out and say that they cremated his body, but who knows? Now in days, people covering everything up. I have no idea. But let me know what you think about that conspiracy. Do you think his body's frozen? Or do you think that this just isn't true at all? Number four on the list has to do with ashes. And by ashes, I mean the ashes of family's loved ones. Apparently, Disney World is a very popular site for people to go and spread the ashes of their loved ones. Personally, I think it's kind of sweet. Obviously, Disney is the happiest place on earth. A lot of families have so many great memories there, so it only makes sense for somebody to do this. I don't know how many people know of people who've done this or know that this does happen. So that's why this is in my List. In 2007, a lady was seen pouring a powder into the water of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. They obviously shut the ride down right away because they had no clue what the powder was. Although it was never confirmed, 
what the powder was. A lot of Disney employees came out to the media saying that it was in fact a woman spreading her loved one's ashes. There are popular ash spreading sites at Disney World which includes the Haunted Mansion ride, the It's a Small World ride, and the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Number five on the list also has to do with the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. So apparently when they first made the ride, the fake skeletons that were created for the ride apparently looked too fake in Walt's opinion. So instead of having fake skeletons, he went out and found real skeleton bones which he used. After a while they realized how creepy this was so they went ahead and replaced the real ones with fake ones. But there's a conspiracy that some of the bones that are there are still real skeleton remains. I thought that was kind of an interesting fact and also spooky. I don't know why I said it like that, but um, yeah, let's just get on to the next one. Wow, what a surprise. Number six on the list also has to do with the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Apparently the Disney workers who work the ride say that if they don't say good morning George and goodbye George to the ghost that lives in the Pirates of the Caribbean area, then that day the ride has many problems. I think we can conclude that there are a lot of ghosts at Disney World. Kind of makes it cool, kind of makes it a little creepy. Which leads us into our next fact. Number seven on the list has to do with the Haunted Mansion and the ghost that haunts the ride. Anyway, the story behind the Haunted Mansion ride, somebody took a picture while they were on the ride and in the picture you can clearly see a little boy's head peeking out. The guy who took the photo said that he didn't use flash. I think this is so creepy, the fact that you can clearly see it's a little boy's head. Number eight on the list is a story that I've heard about and it's honestly so sad. It's just something, you know, creepy about Disney that I think some of y'all might not know so I'm going to share it with y'all. It has to do with the America Sings ride. Basically what the ride was, you sat down and then the stage would like move and each time it moved there was a different scene but unfortunately one of the employees got stuck between the moving stage and the wall and got crushed to death. I just feel so bad for like the person that it happened to. I also feel bad for the people who had to experience that. But the ride is shut down now. You can no longer go there. But yeah, I just think that's a creepy death that happened at Disney. I don't know the story behind that. I don't know if they declared her they're dead or what. Number 10 on the list has to do, oh geez, I just skipped one. Number 10 on the list Number 10. has to do with Disney mind controlling you while you're at the park. That's right, I said you. Disneyland has Imagineers and they basically like designed the park I guess. They came up with the idea of putting smellitizers everywhere and basically when you're in different parts of the park they let out different scents that go with the theme. For example if you're in Main Street you might smell some baked goods and they'll make you be like oh I want to go buy a cookie like that smells so good. Or if you're on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride it's gonna smell like salt water. Personally I think this is genius. Whoever came up with that better have gotten a raise. Although it is kind of creepy that they're mind controlling you. Last but not least, number 10 on the list has to do with Disney's abandoned park. If you don't know about Disney's abandoned parks, have you been living under a rock or something? Personally, I would love to go to a Disney abandoned park. I think it'd be so cool. I think there's one in Paris or China, one of those places, and there's like balls everywhere. Like the balls you see in ball pits. People go there and collect the ball and bring it back. I think that'd be so cool. Not that I would ever have the courage to do that. I can make a whole other video on Disney's abandoned parks but in this video I'm going to be specifically talking about Disney's Discovery Island just because this one stood out to me the most. Disney's Discovery Island was opened in 1974 and it was a nature slash rainforest theme park. It was located in the middle of Bay Lake on a little island. The only way you could get to this island is if you went on a boat and it took you there and back. I'll enter a map here but there were many things on the island such as exotic animals and different things to do. But unfortunately Discovery Island closed in 1999 due to the opening of Animal Kingdom. Why would you want to go to Discovery Island when Animal Kingdom had the same things but so much better and so much more than Discovery Island? So therefore they closed the park down. But eight years after the park closed down, the lights were still running and you could see them from the shore of the area around Discovery Island. A common theme between all Disney's abandoned parks is that they stay there, they don't get knocked down. Like I said, the electricity was still running. They pretty much stay there and just get covered in vegetation. Up until 2017, there were only two people who went to Discovery Island and documented their visit. You have to keep in mind that they had to swim across Bay Lake to get there. I don't think I would have the courage to do that ever. They had seen animals there that were left over, props that were left there. But in 
2017, Matt Swanza uploaded a video to YouTube titled Disney Urban Exploring. I think it was something like that. I'll put a picture here again so y'all can see. He went back to the island 18 years after it closed and took videos in HD. This was big for the fans of Disney's abandoned parks because it was such a recent update. If you want to see the video, I'm not going to link it or anything. You can just go look at Matt Swanza. I'm pretty sure the video is still there and I've seen it myself. I've seen the footage. It's honestly like pretty cool. It's just weird to think that that was once a Disney park that people went to and they kind of just let it die. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe. I have a lot of Halloween videos coming up that I'm so excited about because Halloween time is just a great time. If you have any video suggestions, please leave them in the comments down below. All my social medias, music, everything is in the description. I will see y'all next time I post. Bye!